baby hasn't been born yet, no, I see. <laughs> we'll keep bringing you up to the minute news bulletin. That's great, though. I, I, I dig your whole attitude to this it's thing. It's fascinating. Thank you. Yeah. It re you know what the most beautiful part is? The, the, the between the male and the female. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like he does his job nine months before, and then he splits from the scene, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it kind of keeps the um, activity yeah. rolling, you know, as they That's say. That's a nice, <laughs> nice thing. I hope it never changes. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. We needed that. <laughs> Now, we're going to bring out the remarkable gentleman that Ooh, we uh, yes. were talking about, about earlier. This is what uh, his book, or one of his books, he may have written thousands of them, looks like, titled, as you see, The Phoenix Oracle, Dr. Richard Ireland, the new Edgar Cayce, he is uh, called. True story of America's most outstanding psychic. I've been in this business for a long time, and I've worked with a lot of people to do mentalist acts, and I don't think it's telling secrets out of school to say that most of them are demonstrations for entertainment. Uh, but in this case, uh, what this man does just uh, puzzles me completely and, of course, fascinates all of us. Mm -hmm. Here is Dr. Richard Ireland. Hello, Doctor. Our uh, staff people, uh, Dr. Ireland, have, uh, are still open-mouthed about what you did when you were on the show uh, not long ago. Uh, I've been reading your book at home, and it might uh, be worthwhile since not everyone who sees the show at this moment uh, saw you the last time you were here. If we go over a little bit of your personal story. You were how old when you first began to feel you had this gift? Well, I had gone into surgery, Steve, when I was only five years old for surgery on my eyes, and following the operation, although my eyes were taped and bandaged, surgically cupped, I discovered that I was able to play ball and do many things, and of course this made me sort of the spectacle of the hospital, the leopard child of my family, and that was sort of the beginning. Mm -hmm. From there, it just sort of unfolded in a natural way, and I made my first public demonstration when I was 13 years old. I see. You had run into uh, some other uh, professional uh, psychic, had you at that time? Or? Yes, I had experienced some other um, uh, psychics uh, in the meanwhile, and um, felt as though this was something I could relate to, and uh, ultimately I uh, became involved, and here I am. Mm -hmm. We uh, have uh, given our studio audience cards, just, just plain cards, nothing on them, and instructed them, or those of you, them who care, to write out questions of a personal nature so that uh, when you get an answer, you'll know what uh, Dr. Ireland is talking about. And they have been doing that. Uh, they're writing them right now, are they? Right. Would there be any value? Perhaps it might be interesting at home if we just turn on the house lights for a moment and uh, show that some writing is going on at the moment, or perhaps the writing is all yeah, Apparently it is. Nobody seems to be writing at the moment. Like? Well, there are a few people, and now they're holding up their cards. Uh, we're going to uh, collect them then again in, in just, just a minute or two. And after the next commercial, uh, Dr. Ireland will receive them. That, of course, as you know, since you have them in your hands at that minute, at this minute, you'll know that that will be the first time that Dr. Ireland will have any contact with them at all. And I understand that by the time you do have that contact, you will be all blindfolded and taped so that you couldn't possibly see anything. Yeah, we'll be all ready to go. Uh, I understand that you have been Mae West's advisor, uh, psychic matters for many years. Is that true? Yes, May and I have been friends for many years, and I am rather flattered that she calls me her personal psychic. Uh, she, I don't believe, would have uh, done my or Breckenridge except for my encouragement, right? and now I'm not really sure I should have encouraged her. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, she's quite a remarkable person. Very psychic herself, by the way. She is? Huh? Yes, very. Uh, are you at liberty to divulge any uh, the facts about that? or? Well, um, she has written a great deal about uh, her own psychic experiences in her latest book, and um, I couldn't uh, take time off the show to specifically tell you some of the interesting stories that she shared with me, mm -hmm. uh, some of them rather dramatic, ones where she saved, I think it was $50,000 in a lawsuit because of something that happened to her psychically, was revealed to her psychically, and... Uh, the fact, of course, that she had all of her money in cash in the uh, uh, bank in the safety deposit box when the Depression came. Mm -hmm. That's a nice place to have it when the Depression comes. Have you yeah. been uh, approached by any scholars doing research about psychic phenomena and studied by them? I've been tested in most of the leading parapsychology laboratories all over the world, and parapsychology is a science that studies extrasensory perception from mm -hmm. the University of Vienna to University of McGill, University of Panama, the... Uh, parapsychology laboratories of San Diego, the Religious Research Foundations of Los Angeles, and mm. so many other places I can't mention them all. Mm. There was uh, years uh, I've read in history books where they mention uh, in Greek 
And the ancient Greeks had the, the Delphic Oracle, and uh, people would go to the Oracle to find out things, and they'd have answers sometimes like, you know, if they want to know of a good day of battle, and they'd say, it may rain tomorrow. That never... Uh... We call those weathermen now, Lou. That's <laughs> yeah. a different thing altogether. You'll see Dr. Ireland in action right after this word. At this moment, uh, as you can see, we have our uh, ushers in the aisle uh, collecting the notes from the members of our audience. We thought it was important that you at home see that uh, so that you don't assume there's been any trickery in the handling of the cards. They are being picked up at this minute, taken directly from the people who have just filled them out. Therefore, it follows that Dr. Ireland cannot have seen them, as indeed he has not, could not have done so. And uh, they're being picked up by a member of our staff here, uh, who all of us have in plain sight. And, of course, you will recognize when you hear your own questions referred to. And as you'll see now, Dr. Ireland has begun the, uh, perhaps we could even get a cl closer shot here on that uh, activity, the uh, task of uh, covering up uh, all the area around his eyes with uh, surgical tape, which has the, uh, or whatever the point is worth, the Johnson & Johnson label inside the little roll here. And, uh, and would you like to verify I cannot see Steve? Uh, under, around the Yes, uh, that's absolutely clear. Again, let me, uh, could you get an even closer shot? Because I think around the country people think, oh, he's peeking someplace. No, this is all covered and it's right down here tight against the nose. So there's obviously no chance for light to get through there. And your time is some bow knots back there. All right. And this is a real thick blindfold. We check these two, the three of them as a matter of fact. It's amazing that even after I've uh, put uh, all this on, that uh, certain skeptics who simply won't uh, be convinced are inclined uh, not to believe even then. Huh. Well, I'm generally skeptical about such things, but you, <laughs> you sure covered me the other night. <laughs> That's in case anyone thinks the holes are all lined up. Uh -huh. Or that if, in fact, I might be peeking, and if the papers could be brought up here now, uh, we'll get involved with those All in just right, a uh, moment. Marty, if you, oh, they're, oh, they're already here. I the see. other day I was accused of peeking out of here, Steve. <laughs> yes, people actually have developed, they'll, they'll make up any theory to avoid thinking that... Uh, really, uh, a lady told me that she thought I'd had a hole board between my eyes and my nose and that I could see out of my nostrils. That's the truth. Yes. So now as you can see, there's the tape completely under Dr. Ireland's nose. And, and I asked a doctor about it because I wanted to know, but he said it's uh, physiologically impossible. I'd like to begin by saying hello to someone here by the name of Donna, and Donna, I believe, has uh, uh, written her paper in a uh, felt black pen. Where are you, please, Donna? Is it Donna like Keston? Just stand up if you would. Can I hear your voice? Yes. Alston, that's close enough. Uh, I wanted to say that I do feel as though that you're a rather perceptive individual. You have a lot of capacity, especially in areas of foretelling events before they occur. And it seems that you have asked me something in regards to your husband, and I believe that your husband's in business with your father-in-law. Is that true, please? That's right. And can I tell you that things seem to be looking up as though they have not been just the way that they might be desired, but they do seem to be trending upward. Uh, there will be something good in regards to some, uh, uh, something to do with the uh, Ozarks. Does that make sense to you? That's right. And I want to say to go ahead with something to do with the Ozarks. It does seem to me to be a wise decision and something good will come out of that. Uh, I wanted to uh, encourage you to pay a little bit more attention to your own inner guidance. Uh, I want to speak to a Ron, like Ramstead. Where are you, Ron? Are you out there? Yeah. And uh, uh, did you come down here uh, to visit the show from Santa Ana? Right. And uh, we have not met before, have we? Never. It seems to me as though that you, had an, uh, you have an opportunity that was extended to me one time by Dr. Vasiliev at the University of Leningrad in Russia. You've been invited to go to Russia, isn't that true? That's right. And I seem to believe that you are going to go. It takes you into 1972, however, before you get to go. Uh, and it does seem as though that it will be a meaningful trip and certainly something that you should plan on doing. Uh, I wanted to speak to someone. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to speak to someone else here. I can't find the paper, but someone apparently who's going to be a grandmother. Uh, is there a Marie McCormick here, please? 
Uh, Marie, we have not met before, have we? No, we haven't. And it seems to me as though that you're anticipating being a grandmother. That's right. Uh, could I tell you better hurry home tonight? Fine. <laughs> uh, because it seems to me as though that child will be born tomorrow, uh, between uh, sometime between midnight and the end of tomorrow, and it may be uh, in a little hurry. I think it'll be a boy, and he's rather impatient. And uh, is, is the time set by the doctor as being tomorrow? Right. I've got yes. a bet on well, it. he's not going to miss it too far. <laughs> I want to say hello to someone by the name of Kathy, like Simmons or Simmons. Are you there? Yeah. And Kathy, I feel that you, uh, are you here from South Pasadena? Yes. And uh, can I tell you that I think you've asked me something that you already know. Um, and so I'm not going to answer it, but I can tell you how you can find out. Uh, take your billfold out, look at your driver's license, and you'll see it. Uh, I did feel, however, that there would be uh, uh, less money in your purse after next week because I see you rather actively involved in spending it. Uh, and uh, something to do about uh, a legal matter involving someone else that you've inquired about. Uh, and I want to say that someone's going to be imprisoned. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about, please? No. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, uh, haven't, you, um, haven't you wondered something about Angela? Oh, uh-huh. All right. Uh, <laughs> and I want to say hello to Alan now. Alan like Debias, sir. Debias. Labas. Are you there, Alan? Did we get an answer? He's up, yes. Okay, because it seems to me as, uh, as uh, though uh, apparently you're not from this area. Would I find you... Uh, uh, originally from uh, New Jersey? Yes. Would it be uh, a Lodi? Yeah. And, uh, and now you live in North Hollywood? Yeah. And it seems as though that you make a lot of mistakes when you write, and you've crossed them all out, and it looks really bad. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and I do feel as though that apparently uh, uh, you want to know about someone else, so you're afraid that uh, they're going to turn out to be an old maid. Is that right? <laughs> Yes. Manager. I don't believe that you have to worry. Sharon's going to find herself a husband, all right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I seem to believe that you're interested in showbiz from the standpoint of acting in some way, and I feel that you're going to have that opportunity. Don't think you're going to be a superstar, but seem to think you will be doing things actively uh, in the um, industry, possibly TV. Uh, the name of Anne touches my mind, like our uh, Margolis. And something, are you there, Anne? Yes, uh, please speak to me when you stand up, because I can't see a thing. I'm right here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I do seem to feel as though you're rather perceptive. You have talents in areas of precognition for telling events before they occur. I also feel as though that your husband is involved in music in some way. That's right. And I do feel as though that he is going to be very successful in writing music. Uh, I felt that later on he was going to see a, a symphony uh, that would be apparently uh, uh, composed entirely by him. Uh, that may be another spring, however, before that dream is fulfilled, but you certainly encourage him uh, to continue in writing of music. Thank you. Uh, I want to say hello to Ellen Sherman and say congratulations, Ellen. Are you there? Congratulations. Uh, Dr. Island, pardon me. We're going, right. to, going to stop just a moment for a commercial and then we'll continue right afterwards. Dr. Ireland, uh, the, uh, the panel, our guest members here are so uh, impressed with what you're doing, they've asked if they could... Uh, What's this? <laughs> That's funny. Just reached in my pocket and took out... Uh, A five-dollar pound note? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Wow. That's fantastic, because a while ago, Frankie Cap, our drummer, remembering that the last time Dr. Ireland was on the show, he uh, did something fantastic in, in, the, not, in identifying a $20 bill and giving the serial number, Frank said... I'll fix him. Uh, he's going to England in a, in a couple of days. He said, I've already got some English money. This will fool him. And he, I, he didn't even, you know, he reached into my pocket and took it out. Oh. That's pretty scary. <laughs> anyway, the panel wanted to get in on it, so I'm just throwing these cards uh, down here if you wish to use them or not. Okay, we'll just see how they fit in as we go along here. 
Oh, I want to go back to uh, Ellen. Now, I think that's where we left off, was with Ellen Sherman, wasn't it? Yes. And I wanted to offer her congratulations, because um, I feel as though that apparently uh, you're going to be a mother. Did you know that? Yes, I did. <laughs> and uh, would you like to settle for a boy, too? I'm passing out boys tonight. Love to. <laughs> and I did feel as though that there won't be any problem, uh, but are you just visiting here, or do you live here now? I live here now. Uh, but did you uh, come here from Minneapolis, Minnesota? Yes, I did. Well, it's nice to have you with us this evening, and I think you're going to have a little prune picker. And, uh, Steve, yes, I think your son will be moving, as a matter of fact. Uh, I think it's already planned, sort of in the hopper, and uh, I do think it uh, will be good. And it comes about the middle of July, and everything seems to work out. I want to tell Louie and I have a nice time in Europe. Seems as though you'll be going all over the area, not staying in just one area or one place. Uh, I wanted to uh, say hello to Lanny. Uh, uh, Lanny, is it? Is that the way you say it? And uh, I don't know. It seems to me as though that you, uh, uh, I could say congratulations, too, as well. And I rather think it's going to be a boy. However, I seem to believe that there is going to be a girl and there won't be too much time in between. Uh, so if, you, if you're not planning it that way, don't skip a pill. <laughs> I wanted to tell Denise, like McGillan, where are you, please? Don't worry, because I feel as though that you're worried about someone else, and again, it involves a baby. Isn't that true? Yes. Uh, but I don't feel that you should be concerned, because uh, the youngster's going to get here, a rather stubborn little fellow, and uh, it seems uh, uh, that, the, uh, that I'm talking, I guess, about a girl this time. And I do feel as though that the baby was supposed to have been born a week ago. Isn't that right? Yes. Well, you know, uh, as I said, she's kind of stubborn. And I think she's going to take her time getting here. It's going to be, oh, three more days, uh, I feel. Uh, so tell your sister to just hang on. She can go and go to a movie or do whatever she wants to do in the meanwhile. Uh, <laughs> is there someone here by the name of Bob? <laughs> like, thank you, like Lindholm. Lindholm. Yeah. Uh, and Bob, it seems to me as though that you didn't come al alone this evening. Did you bring a girl with you? Uh, yes, I did. Yes. Uh, and are you and her sort of having a scrap or something? No. Uh, uh, well, I feel as though that you asked me on your piece of paper, does my girlfriend really like me? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think she really likes you. Is her name Kim? <laughs> yeah. You didn't put her name on your paper, did you? <laughs> no. See, and I don't know you, do I? No. I just want to tell you that Kim really likes you. <laughs> Is there a Walt Hale out here, please? Walt? Yeah, and you, uh, and, um, oh, I've lost it. Uh, something <laughs> about a magazine. Uh, I don't know, you brought, uh, you thought the show was going to be so boring, you brought along a magazine to read? Just a line Is outside. That true? Yeah, well, uh, the line outside is kind of boring. Oh, so. I see. <laughs> and are, are you at uh, USC? Right. If you stick it out, you're finally going to graduate, but you're sort of pokey about it. It seems like you're taking longer than necessary. Yeah. And I did feel as though that, uh, uh, that someone changed shoes, and that doesn't make any sense to me, uh, I, I guess, to go with her outfit. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, right. does that make sense to you? <laughs> I'm glad, because yeah. it doesn't make any sense yeah, at Ms. all Kazan to me. Yeah, Miss Kazan changed shoes during break. Uh-huh. Right. And uh, that's all you're going to get from me. Yeah. Uh, My shoes! <laughs> Want to say hello to Pat, like Gallagher. Where are you, Pat? Patricia Gallagher? Here. Here. And it seems as though that apparently... Um, you're here from, like, uh, Shoshone, Idaho? I'm originally from Shoshone. Well, that's nice. We're glad you're here anyway. And it seems as though that apparently you better get ready because your in-laws are going to come out and stay longer than you would like. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in the course of the summer. Maybe you can dream up a little quake or something to scare them in staying home. <laughs> I, uh, I feel as though that you're very creative, a very, uh, a very capable uh, individual, and I would like for you to develop your creative talents in every way, because I feel that as the creative becomes more developed, you become more sensitive, then the psychic becomes developed too. Uh, where is S. Lowe, please? 
Do you want me to tell everything I know? We'll get a mic to him in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I tell everything I know? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to let I don't want anyone to let him out of here. He's got ten thousand five hundred smackers in his pocket. Isn't that true? Correct. Plus a poker chip. Right. Oh. And uh, something I, I feel, I don't know, but I, can I tell you that that's only a start and that's not really good money anyway. I feel that the best money is going to come uh, uh, for you a little bit later on and uh, uh, in a real sense of financial success and, and uh, security. And I felt as though it would come through uh, more, I uh, almost want to say legitimate avenues than that, but I don't want to make it sound too dark here. Uh, but it looks as though that you can anticipate a lot of financial benefits in the future. There's a Brad Pratter out here who wrote his in, in green ink. And uh, I feel as though that you've asked me something about uh, your being able to get something done. I guess it would be on the air. Right. I, you uh, aspire, I think, to be a sportscaster of some Right on the nose. <laughs> and did you come here with Dan? Dan Alexander, my big friend right yeah. here. I thought, <laughs> I sort of felt the two of you were sitting there close together. I haven't met Dan either, have I? No, huh? And uh, Dan, do you go with Barbara? No, I that's, don't. That's, that's Dave. Uh, Brad right goes here. with Barbara. This is your good friend Barbara right here. <laughs> yeah, is Barbara right there too? Yeah, she's right here. Yeah. Oh, anyway, you all get together and have a good time. Oh, doctor? Uh, I just doctor. want to tell Barbara that uh, apparently she's got one cornered. She's closing in on him. Uh, and uh, I could feel as though, you know, that you're going to be getting married uh, probably sooner than you even anticipated. Uh, is there a Ken Fuller out here, please? <laughs> Dr. Ireland, am I correct in assuming that this ability uh, of yours, uh, if we assume, as I do, that it's uh, just as represented, uh, is not turned on constantly, but that you have to kind of crank yourself up in some way? That's certainly true, uh, Steve. I usually start almost an hour before a show and began uh, mentally, as it were, turning on. It's almost like a, a self-hypnosis or mind control. Mm -hmm. now, I asked you this uh, the other evening when you were on the show, but... Uh, we were off the air at that time, and I know the audience will be interested in the answer you gave me. Uh, what he did would be remarkable even if he could see it, or even if he was not blindfolded. If you ask me questions, all I can give you is jokes. I can't tell you, you know, about your babies or your jobs or your whatever in the future. And yet he does that, so he's doing a number of remarkable things simultaneously. Um, but I said to him, there must be a sense in which you see these uh, things written, or you see that somebody gave you a green fountain pen or whatever. And I said, do you see it just as if you were not blindfolded? And then what was your answer? Well, I said, uh, not really, because it's a, it's a certain sensory sight. And I'd like, if I have time, to uh, state it in two ways. If I touch a piece of paper or I touch a bill, and if I want to know what's on it, then it sort of passes uh, behind, as my forehead were a screen, a movie screen, it sort of passes in black and white, strangely. And uh, the black is white and the white is black like a negative. Mm. And I can see what's on it. However... Uh, it's more like seeing if I'm moving a about, uh, actually walking around, it's like a, a dream that is so very real that it is real. And um, it's uh, similar, I would say, to that. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of any experiments which may or may not have been conducted by the United States Navy Submarine Service concerning extrasensory perception? I've heard about this. However, uh, they have, uh, I understand, made uh, denials of this. Uh, I was, uh, however I can say, privileged to be, uh, to be invited to act as a consultant for the selection and training of astronauts for the Man Into Space program uh, by one of our uh, leading uh, uh, firms in this country. So I think the government is really becoming definitely interested in making use of the psychic on a practical level. There's no more certain way, it just occurred to me, to get one of the superpowers interested in this phenomena than by suggesting that the other side is interested. So that if, even if for that reason alone, there would probably be enormous uh, well, Steve, research that, going on that's now. not really true, because the, uh, in Russia they have 20 governmental subsidized laboratories headed up by the University of Leningrad, mm -hmm. and we do not have one governmental subsidized laboratory in this country. Hmm. 
so far as we know. And I guess you would know. Well, I think I would know. <laughs> a question that I think occurs to everyone who uh, encounters this, uh, this kind of phenomenon is that they often put it like this. Well, listen, wise guy, if you can tell what's mm -hmm. going to happen, why don't you go out to a Santa Anita tomorrow and clean up, you know, become a millionaire in one afternoon? It's such a common question. You must have heard it a thousand times. How do you answer it? Well, usually when someone says it to me, I give a sort of a, a Steve Allen answer. Uh, they say, uh, if you're so smart, you know, why aren't you rich? And I always answer by saying I am. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. Uh, but however, uh, I do not feel that to uh, use my talent or gift or however you want to term it uh, for the purpose of gain through gambling, uh, I feel that would be a misuse, and I feel that I would probably uh, lose it or uh, I would suffer because of it. Are there people who do use it, who have it? I believe that there are individuals who do have a certain talent and who are inclined to use it, and most of these people are probably unaware that they're even psychic. They just think they're lucky. I think uh. they get a hot streak at the table. <laughs>